my name is Paul Benyon, and I'm one of the sales engineers here at Hard Dollar Corporation. And today I'm going to walk you through how to create pay items in your estimates. And when I say pay items, I mean uh, something that has a lot of different terms. Often it's called bid items, tendered items, the deliverable items that will show up on the contract for the owner or the client. And Hard Dollar has a separate screen, a separate register where those pay items can be entered in. And this will become a very valuable tool towards the end of the balancing of the project and the final pricing of the project where you'll be able to take advantage of some of the automatic distributing capability that Hard Dollar has to take your overhead, your profit, and spread it strategically over those pay items. To get started, we'll hop into a new project. You can see I have an empty job folder and from my sidebar I'm going to switch to my estimator role and select the pay item and proposal register. This is where you will be able to put in your pay items initially before you've had any opportunity to break those pay items down into costs. You can see on my current view that I have just a few columns showing. I'm going to, in the description, go ahead and enter in mobilization, which we'll have a, as a lump sum quantity. And we'll also go ahead and enter in clearing and grubbing with a quantity of 10 acres. Now one very important thing to know as I enter in my pay items, uh, it's just as easy, first of all, as you can see, where I can just go ahead right in to the description, put in the description, the quantity, and the unit of measure, and, and that's basically it. However, you'll notice that I have two quantities showing up here. The pay quantity is referring to the quantity that a lot of times you may receive from the client, and uh, so this is the owner's quantity. The forecast takeoff quantity is just what the description says. It's the quantity that you measure, that you take off. This will be important as you consider overruns and underruns once the project is, is uh, ready to submit. You may want to take into consideration items that uh, you see have an overrun quantity and reorganize how you're going to distribute the profit of your project over those items. This is a topic that is actually discussed in one of our other sessions. But we're going to jump ahead and assume that we've gone ahead and entered in additional pay items for the project. And to do that, we're going to jump over to the training job. The training job, you can see I have uh, the, all of my pay items have been defined. And we're now in the cost breakdown structure where each one of those pay items became a level one cost item. And as I look on the right, each one of these cost items, I then went ahead and broke down into greater detail, including down to a resource level where we see rented equipment that's been added onto these items. I have excavation that's broken down into child items that have resources with their resource rates and the production defined. All of this to come up with my direct cost. Well, in another screen called the price breakdown structure, which we won't go into today, I'm able to define any additional overhead and profit for the project. And then we're able to come back full circle if I jump once again into the pay item and proposal register. Now we can see the listing of those pay items with those quantities that are still there. But I now am able to decide how I'm going to spread my overhead and profit over each of those items. And to do that, I have at my disposal an auto price tool located under the tools menu that I can go into to either balance the project or like I mentioned, when you have overruns and underruns, you can do what's called unbalancing to um, take advantage of items that you believe will end up being measured out at a higher quantity. In this case, we're gonna choose to balance the project. So as soon as I do that, you'll notice that there's a recap up above that indicates, first of all, what my target price is. The target price is the goal price that we had established 
on the price breakdown structure uh, screen. That is the gold price, which is the total of your profit, your overhead, and your direct cost. The current price that you see on here is the pricing, the total of all the pricing, the unit and total prices down below. The, in other words, it's telling me that it's, now that I have spread the, my overhead, my profit, my cost over all of my pay items, I am now this, reaching my target price. It now is the same and shows zero variance between the two. I'm always free at any time to be able to manually make pricing changes. As you can see down below, if I wanted my uh, unclassified excavation to be $8 instead of $8.21, I can make that unit price change. When I did that, that factored with the 50,000 cubic yards of my pay quantity to now tell me that I need to add $10,500 somewhere else in the project if I want to hit my target price. So this recap becomes very handy in helping you to be able to distribute your overhead and your profit. There's also the ability to lock down prices once you have them set in stone simply by clicking on the lock price option. I may decide to leave just a couple items open for any last minute changes or ads or cuts to the job, when, in which case I can go ahead and rerun my auto price and balance once again and tell the system not to overwrite any of my prices that have been locked down, in which case it will take the remaining amount, whatever is in that, that variance from my target, and it will add and cut it from any of the items that have been unlocked in the, in the project. So that is a quick summary of how pay items work in hard dollar and how you're able to set them up and then distribute your overhead and profit over those pay items. From here, you're ready to send out the proposal. So I hope you've enjoyed it. We will talk to you next time.